In the last video, we set up the deformation bones and we got them where we wanted. And now that we have the base rig made to our liking, it's time that we make the controls we want to use. This is where the organization of our rig is going to become increasingly necessary so that way we don't get lost in the bone sauce. We're going to be making two levels of control for this rig, FK and IK. But first, I want to give the deform rig its own set prefix, which is something I didn't do in the previous video when I put the rig together. In edit mode, instead of using F2 to rename all the bones individually, I'm going to select all of the deform bones and then hold control and hit F2 to do a batch rename. And from here, we're going to change a few settings. First of all, we want to change the target type from object to bones. So that way, when we apply the changes to the name, it applies to the bones and not the armature object. Then I'm going to change the rename mode from find and replace to set name. And finally, I'm going to change it from set name to prefix. And the prefix is going to be DEF. With that done, we're ready to make the first set of controller bones. To do this, I'm just going to select all the deform bones, making sure not to include the root, hips, or cog bones, and I'm going to duplicate them. These duplicated bones are going to form the basis of the FK controls, but as it stands right now, things are going to get very messy. With bones overlapping and getting in the way, we need a way to separate the new FK controls from the deformed bones. And to do this, we're going to utilize armature layers. Over here in the armature's data properties, we can see these little pips here, with one of them highlighted with a dot. By clicking on other pips, you'll notice that our bones will disappear. This is because we're actually looking into empty layers. If we hold shift and click, we can actually select multiple layers at a time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to our original layer and to make this more organized, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M and this is going to bring up the move to layers menu. And by clicking on an unoccupied layer, this will move the duplicated bones to that layer. Now that we've duplicated and moved these bones, we're going to have to rename them since duplicating them added an extra serial number to their names. I'm going to do a batch rename, but I'm going to start off by replacing the current prefix. These are no longer the deform bones, these are the FK. So wherever it says def, I'm going to replace it with FK. Then I'm going to perform another batch rename. But this time, I want to strip the numbers and punctuations that we got at the end of our names from duplicating them. So I'm going to change the mode and adjust the settings and apply the changes. And that should be the last of the batch names for the FK rig. All we have to do now is select all of them and disable their deforms and we can move on to the IK rig. And making the IK layer works just the same as making the FK layer. All we have to do is just repeat all the steps, replace that prefix with IK, and strip the unneeded numbers at the end. As a result of duplicating all these bones at once and moving them to their own individual layers, the FK and IK arm chains are parented to their respective spine chain, when in fact they should be parented to the original deformed spine 3 bone. This might cause the arms to disconnect when we swap from FK spine to IK spine or vice versa. So in anticipation of this, what we're going to do is we're going to select each of the FK and IK clavicle bones and in the bone settings tab, we are going to manually set their parent to the deformed spine 3 to set them right. Now that these layers are set up and ready to be implemented, the next thing that we need to do is set up the FK IK switch system, which may sound like a very daunting task at first, but really it's relatively simple. All the system does is it tells the deform bones to either copy the FK bones or the IK bones, and this can be done with two bone constraints. Well, specifically one bone constraint, the copy transforms constraint. This constraint will force the deformed bones to copy the translation, rotation, and scale of any of the constraint targets. So all we gotta do is add two copy transform constraints to every deformed bone. All 23 of them. Yeah, that's a lot of clicking. Yeah, I don't recommend that you go into every bone individually and giving them each their own constraints. That kind of painful work is what burnouts are made of. So instead of doing it the painful way, I'm going to do what's called a pro gamer move and cut all of our work in half. First of all, I'm going to go into the armature properties tab and I'm going to select all of the layers that our armature is currently sitting in. And then I'm going to select all of the right side of the rig and I'm just going to delete them. Then on the deform layer, I'm going to select one bone and I'm going to add the two copy transform constraints. Then I'm going to rename them respectively FK copy and IK copy. And I'm going to set their target to the amateur. I'm not going to worry about setting the bone targets just yet. They just need to act as a template for now. And now to copy them to every bone on this layer. This is where a certain add-on comes in handy, the Copy Attributes menu. If you don't have this add-on enabled, go into your preferences where your add-on settings are, and in this search bar, type in Copy, and it should be one of the first options available. Click the checkbox to enable it, and then save your preferences. With this add-on enabled, when I'm in Pose mode, by hitting Control c I'm given a new menu with a lot of options for me to copy from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control a to select all of our bones, and then I'm going to select the bone that had the Copy FK and IK constraints as active. 
And then by hitting Control C, I'm gonna go down here to where it says Copy Selected Constraints, and I'm gonna select the both of them. And from here, now we can go into each bone and manually set the respective FK and IK target. We still do have to type in our target manually, but since I use the same name with a different prefix, you can just type one in and then just paste it into the other and replace the prefix. After we fill all the constraint target fields, we still have one last step we have to take. As it stands right now, we have no control over these constraints at all. Let's say we wanted to switch from FK to IK controls just for the arm. We would have to go into each bone manually and set the influence sliders just to get them to swap between the two. No control or automation, it's a complete nightmare. So the way we are going to tackle this is we're going to use something called drivers. Drivers are essentially of a way of controlling a value using a function or variable from somewhere else in Blender. Any numerical value that is stored within Blender that can be targeted can be used as a driver. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to add two boxes to this scene. Let's do something wacky like this. I'm going to go into this box's X rotation value, and I'm going to right click it, and here you can see an option that's highlighted that says copy as new driver. All right, now that I've copied that, I'm going to go over here to this box and let's right click the Z locational value and hit paste driver. You'll now see that the cube has shifted and the Z locational value has become purple. This means that this value is now being affected by a driver, and what that means for us is if we rotate this cube on the Z axis, we should be able to move the second cube up and down. Kind of like turning a valve to lift a gate, but for our purposes, we don't want a cube or an object or even a phone to control the constraints that we have. So here's what we're going to do instead. In the Armature Properties tab, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see there's a section that says Custom Properties and a little button that says Add. For now, let's just add one custom property. By adding it, it gives us a new Armature property called Prop. And if we hit Edit, we can see more details about our new property. We can see its name, we can see its current value, its default value, as well as its minimum and maximum values. Out of the box, this custom property does everything that we need it to do. All we need to do is just change the name. So I'm gonna change it to arm L F K I K. I'm naming the property this way because simply by reading it, I know what it does. If we slide the value right, we get IK. If we slide the value left, we get FK. Of course, it's also a good idea to add tooltips to our properties in case you manage to forget, or someone else besides you is using your rig. So you can just type that out real quick, and if you want to view it at any time, you can just hover over the value and it'll tell you what the tooltip is. Now, with our ARML property complete, we're going to right-click it and hit Copy New Driver. Then we're going to go into one of the deformed bones in the left arm and go into their Constraints tab, and I'm going to paste this driver into the Copy IK Influence. And when I paste this driver into all the arms Copy IK constraints, when I pose the FK and IK separately, I should be able to control and switch between the FK and IK on the fly like this, twinning between them directly. Now all you have to do is do the same for both the leg chain and the spine, making custom properties and pasting them into their copy IK influences. And after we set up the drivers for the arm, the spine, and the legs, we're ready to move on to actually begin making the IK systems for our rig, which I'll do over the next three videos, one for the arm, one for the leg, and one for the spine. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. For more notifications, you can follow me on Twitter where I make announcements and post art. I also try to stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30 p.m. when I can. If not, you will know about it on Twitter if I make an announcement about it. I also have a Discord and subreddit where I hang out and chat about art, 3D modeling, and animation stuff. If you want to support me financially, which will help me make future tutorials, I have a Ko-Fi page. I don't like to advertise my Ko-Fi page because it kind of just feels like I'm begging. But I am planning to put up free downloadable content on there, so that way if you want free 3D assets, you can go and download them there. Be sure to check those links out, all of which are in the description below, and really, that's all I have to say. See ya.